Okay, 94.3, the exercises. We'll start with problem number one. Uh, by the way, this might seem ridiculous to you, but um, we're using a binomial theorem to approximate these things. i got to be honest with you. If I were going to approximate the root of 59, I would not go to the binomial theorem to do it, or the generalized binomial theorem to do it. I would use a calculator. <coughs> However, there's something to be said about this. It requires some thinking, and that's why we're going to do it. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard to do the problem. This is number one. And let me see if I go to the whiteboard here. Yeah, I got a whiteboard. I'll do the whiteboard. So let me push that up a little bit. And um, I just want to say we're doing problem number one, and they want me to approximate. This is number one, and they want to approximate the root of 59. All right? Now, before I, I go off on a wild goose chase of doing this, I want to point out the root of 59 is between, let's see, the root of, what's the perfect square above 59? 64. And the one to below 59 would be 49. Oops, 49. So it's between 7 and 8. All right, that's pretty important to know that because when I approximate this number, which is the square root of 59, it's going to be approximately 7 point something. All right, now somebody could say, how am I going to do that? Well, it does require some thinking. I, I hate to say that. But we've been dealing with the generalized binomial for some time. So the first thing I want to write down is what the expansion is for the root 1 plus x. All right? And this is going to be 1 plus 1 half of an x. We've done this many times before. I'm hoping this is not news to you. Minus 1 eighth x squared. And then it's going to be plus 1 sixteenth x cubed, I think you get the idea, minus 5 over 128, x4. And, you know, I, I could say, oh, this goes on forever, and it does, all right? But what you have to start to realize is this is only convergent if the absolute value of x is less than 1, which means the x is between minus 1 and 1. So what I'm going to do over here is, you know, kind of play around with it a little bit, all right? And, you know, to play around with something is to think about it. And I certainly, we're trying to encourage the thought process here. So I'm going to look at this thing, and I'm thinking about how to do this. And I'm thinking the perfect squares I have to deal with at this point are 64 and 49. Let me try 64. So I'm going to write this 64, and then I'd write down minus 5. Now, someone says, why are you doing that? 64 is a perfect square. You could also use um, 49. All right, I'll write that over here. If I wrote 49 down, what would it be? 49 plus 10. Now, someone says, oh, I wonder which one's a better choice. Well, they're both equal to the root of 59. But if I'm going to be using this, I must think now. So let me write this over here. So what am I thinking about? This is going to be 64... 1 minus 5 over 64. All right, let's go to the next one. If I pull out the 49, what do you get? We well, get 1 plus 10 over 49. All right? Now, if I were to write these down, this one's crazy, but you could write these things down, right? What do you get? You get 8, and then you get the root 1 minus 5 over over 64. What do you get over here? 7, and then you get the root 1 plus 10 over 49. Now, now the question becomes is, which one are you going to use? Now, I'm looking at it, and I want to write this over here. I wonder which is closer to the middle, which is the zero part of it. And why is that? If you looked at the, if you looked at the curve, it would converge perfectly there. All right, if x were 0. So I want the fraction to be as small as possible. So which fraction is smaller? 5 64 I'll put a question mark over here, or 10 over 49. All right? Well, I hope you can see that, but I'm going to do some work over here. 5 times 49 and 64 times 10. I'll put this over here. And 5 times 49, what is going to be? Um, that's going to be 245, right? So I hope you realize, let me get my little eraser out. 
that one guy's a better choice than the other. And we really are trying to focus on the smallest possible number. This guy here. This is going to be our choice. This guy here is going to take much longer to converge. All right? So we'll use this one over here. All right? Now, that does take some thinking, by the way. And we're going to encourage it. We've been dealing with the generalized bottom line for some time. But I want to point out the interval of convergence is between minus 1 and 1. The closer you are to the, to the middle, though, the better the convergence gets. So we want to get x to be as small as possible. We really do. I've got to write this down now as 8, 1, plus, minus 5, over 64. Now, i, I got to be honest with you. It, it's painful. And what do you mean by painful? The, even the fact of writing it down is painful. But I can do it. And what are you going to get? 8. By the way, maybe wonder what I'm doing over here. We're going back. Did I write that down for you? Oh, it's right over here. We're writing this down here. All right? So what do you get? You get 1 plus, wait a second. I forgot to write the 1 down in a bracket. Sorry about that. It's 8 times 1 plus 1 half times minus 5 over 64. <sighs> we got to put the next one down. Minus 1 eighth minus 5 over 64 squared. I think you get the idea, right? Plus... 1 16th minus 5 over 64 cubed. <coughs> Excuse me. 5 over 128 minus 5 over 64 to the fourth power. Now, it kind of, you know, what I would recommend to do is, you know, I'm not going to do the computation, that's for sure. But what I would recommend to do is, this. I get a feel for it. And, and what are we doing? We're trying to find the square root of what? 59, right? So I would say in your calculator, do the square root of 59. And then what I'd say in your calculator, also do this. Term by term by term by term. Right? How long would this go on? This goes on forever. And I got to be honest with you, forever never ends. You're not going to get there. All right? You're not going to get there. But you can take it out and you're going to find out remarkably good this is at approximating the root of 59. It goes pretty quick, all right? Now, granted, there's all kinds of theorems about when to stop, but right now, let's just get a numerical feel for it. We're going to continue to talk through problems of this nature by doing this over here. As I do these things over here, is I don't think we should be deriving these things at this point. We've done that before. What you're going to do is you're using these now, all right? You use them as a numerical technique to approximate a root. That's all you're doing. Thank you.